Hello everybody, how are you glowing? So, huh, I am sitting here and I'm enjoying the peace and quiet of my house right now. Like my kids are at my parents' house. Um, we're celebrating because this is the second weekend in a row that our two-year-old is over there. Like we just a few months ago, she did not want to stay there. She wanted to be with her mommy and daddy. And then when we did make attempts for her to um, spend the night over there, you know, they said she would wake up and cry all night. Or But now she wants to go. She doesn't want to be with us. She wants to go to her brother and sister. She wants to go to her nana house. And last weekend, I was so shocked. I was like, are you sure you want to stay? Like, are you sure? Then I found myself being concerned about her waking up at night and crying. Well, my, you know, like, I was just concerned. And then this weekend, she just went, and she's okay. And, you know, like, I'm sitting here, and I'm just, okay, first off, sitting on my couch. This morning, I woke up, and I was, like, getting our living room organized and together. And, you know, we've been in this, in our house for um, about probably five months now. Let me see. Yeah, July, August. Six months. We've been here six months now and almost six months. And we just got a couch and a love seat for our living room last week. No, earlier this week. And I mean, little things like this when you buy a couch and a love seat for your living room and how it starts to pull everything together, it's amazing. And, you know, we didn't plan for it, even though we knew we needed one. It was like, we didn't plan to buy this. But my husband was like, nope, we're getting a couch and a, we're getting a living room set this week. Because, you know, he was like, we need to change our environment. We need to make our environment in our home more peaceful. Um, in the past few months has been tough. But, like, I even had the opportunity to, like, I, I put my books back on the shelf and I, I'm just I'm sitting here on the couch and I'm just looking at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, that gives me so much peace to look at my bookshelf and to see how color coordinated. Like I color coordinate my books and I've never done this and I've kind of tried to size them as well. And I, I was just sitting here looking at it and I'm like, this gives me so much peace. Like mess and disorganization, oh my God, it frustrates me so much. And I'm just self-reflecting today in this silence in my home. Like, I've been going through this journey of really learning who I am. And lately, these past few months, it's really been like a go-with-the-flow type of season for me. And I was just sitting here on my iPad and reading because um, I took Strengths Finders test. I don't know if you know what that book is, but there's a book called Strengths Finders out there. And um, you take an assessment and it tells you what your strengths are. It tells you what your strengths are. That's my husband or not? Nope, maybe. Ugh. It tells you what your strengths are. And one of my strengths um, is adaptability. And I have like two more. I cannot remember. I'm trying to keep them at the top of my head. But pretty much I am a go with the flow type of person. And, you know, growing up, going throughout my 20s, this was really hard for me to understand that that was the type of person that I am. I'm a creative person. I'm a go with the flow type of person. I do not like routine. So I really got into taking personality tests. Um, I've taken the... Um, 16 personalities test. I'll put all these links in the description box. I've taken the strength finders. I've taken um, the Enneagram test. And I'm sure there's another one that I'm not thinking about. But um, knowing who you are is so important. So, you know, Jesus is everything to me. And sorry, I'm reading a text message. <laughs> But um, Jesus is everything to me. And what I'm going through right now in my life is that it's very important for me to know who God is. And, and as I reflect on this whole go with the flow type of life that I have, I, I understand now that it's really important for me to understand how to embrace going with the flow and embrace change and be prepared for it. Um, because... 
my number one goal right now is to live for God. And I say prayers and I say, you know, I let God know, like, God, I am ready for you to use me for the thing that you created me for. You, I always say God created me for something so specific on this earth that that's all that I want. I don't want anything else because since childhood throughout my 20s, I've lived like I'm, thir I'm about to be 32. And throughout, you know, up until about, whew, I'd probably say this year is when I really started to embrace, okay, Crystal, you are who you are. You know, like God has made you for something so special. So start embracing that journey. Um, but it's so important for me to know who I am. Like, oh my gosh, really understand who I, I am, not who everybody else perceives me as, not who my parents said that I was supposed to be, not who my husband perceives me to be because, you know, we'll start to live off of the reaction of other people and the rejection. Rejection was something that I dealt with for so long because I didn't want my parents, I didn't want my husband or anybody to reject me because when I felt like I was being rejected, I would feel like, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? What do I need to do so they don't reject me? And I started to become somebody that I wasn't. And when I really understood that, it made me realize that if I, if I'm trying to become someone for other people, how can I ever become who God has purposed me to be? So with one of my strengths being adaptability, like I was saying, um, it's just so important for me to be able to go with the flow. And you know, as a mother, as a wife, when you have a family and you got a young family, you're still young as a married couple, you're learning every day, you're taking it day by day. Like being able to adapt is so important. Um, and at one point I found myself trying to just plan out our life and do this and implement this routine and that routine. And I will always fail and I could not understand why. And I would just beat myself up. Like I would dwell on the past about things and feel shame and guilt and wonder why, like my relationship with my parents is this way. Why can't me and my husband get it right? It was just, it was so many things that were really holding me down and now that I understand that my strength is adapting, I have to use that for good. Like I would adapt, but I would adapt in a way where it was like, I was so frustrated all the time. Like even right now, some days I find myself just being overly frustrated because things don't go the way that I planned or I couldn't get something done. But I have to understand that that's one of my strengths is being able to adapt. And okay, if something doesn't go the way that I thought I needed it to go, then okay, Crystal, what's the next plan? Like I got to keep going. And this is so important as a mother because our kids learn from us. They watch what we do. They, um, they pick up things that we do. And if I show nothing but frustration to my children because I couldn't get something done for the day or I had this plan for the week or, oh, the kids were supposed to do this and we didn't get it done or just frustration with my husband and we're fussing or whatever. My kids watch that and not saying that none of these things will happen because, I mean, frustration is going to happen at times, but it's all about how I handle it. My kids are watching how I respond to situations. So now I have to learn to embrace adaptability, like change with a positive outlook. Even if it's a bad change or it's something that happened that was just not so great, I have to learn to perceive it with good because God works everything together for our good, right? So nothing that happens to us is really bad. There's a lesson that is going to come out of it in a test that we have to pass. And that's why it's so important to be able to go with the flow because if you're a person that follows Jesus, you know, in, in, in his life and you're reading your Bible and you're learning to understand what life is really about, why you were created, you will know that life is not going to go the way that you planned. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Whew. And when you learn to get that perspective of we have a go with the flow type of God, not go with my flow, go with his flow. So he can be making change happening 
your life right now and you become so frustrated and negative and anger and bitterness and all this stuff start to come up that you lose sight of the real vision that is happening there 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 could be opportunity coming out of this change that's happening in your life this flow that is happening when in your life that you miss the opportunities you miss the doors y'all i am preaching to myself right now Ooh. and something particular happened to us um over and you know my husband is a go with the flow type of guy but something happened to us last weekend i think it was last weekend or two two weeks ago um so i found out that we were having another baby we're having another baby probably We'll be here September next year. And I mean, I'm not surprised, but I'm like, oh my gosh, because I quit my birth control like two months ago. And you know, you have this conversation, you have this plan and it's like, okay, husband, we're not on birth control. So let's get this right. So I had the app and everything and, you know, trying to track everything, but obviously, with how God created our wonderful bodies as women. Um, yeah, trying to track the ovulation and still ended up this way. So I knew it like a week before I took the test, I knew it and I just felt it. Like something felt so different, not so different cause I got three kids already, but something just, I knew intuition, right? Um, and I took a test really early and I had really, really, really faint lines. And um, I, I felt so many emotions. I was angry. I was frustrated. I felt bitter towards my husband because, you know, I had this discussion with him. But I can't just blame him, of course. Like, it took both of us to get there, right? Um, but I felt so many emotions and so many things started, started to trigger from my last three pregnancies because emotionally... I was a mess for my last three pregnancies and all these emotions started coming up. All these things started just to arise within me and I started to feel shame because I was like, you know, just like, I'm like, what are my parents going to say? And it's like, why does that even matter now? Like I'm 31 years old. My parents do not help us take care of our children. We pretty, I mean, they help us, but they don't take care of my kids. They don't provide for them, you know? No. So I had to catch myself because I'm like, oh my God, now I'm going to have to tell my parents and my dad is going to show disappointment. My mom is not going to say anything, of course, because just replaying the last three and I had to get a grip on myself because then I started to feel shame and shameful to tell anybody that we were pregnant. And I started to think about my life right now and our situation and oh how much money I don't have how are we gonna afford to have a fourth baby and blah 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 like all of these things started to replay only because of what I had gone through in my last four pregnancies but I was bitter towards my husband I was like you know like oh my gosh we're going through this we were just talking about the fact that we did not want to deal with this right now our two-year-old is just finally going over to my parents house again and you know we're replaying something because when we found out we were pregnant with my last daughter, she's two now, it was the same exact situation. And I wasn't on birth control in between like doctor's visits and getting insurance ready. And I got pregnant. And then, you know, I was living in the house with my parents and, um, the situation at that time was just horrible, like horrible mentally, emotionally, physically, my environment, the way my marriage was, everything was horrible at that time. So to have a baby in that situation was like, oh my gosh. So now it's playing out the same way. Like I was in a birth control and got pregnant. And, you know, we were just putting in our minds that, okay, this, we're going to do this, this, and this. And, you know, this third baby, we're going to give it some time before we have another one. And then I was telling people like, oh no, I'm done. But in my mind, it's like, I knew I wasn't done. Like, I felt like I, you know, we were going to prepare for another baby. But I was like, after we have a wedding and all this great stuff and you know, you have your plans and then bam, something happens. And how are you going to respond to it? 
are you going to go with the flow or are you going to sit and dwell and get depressed and angry and all this stuff? And I had to catch myself and I'm like, Lord, you know, your will be done. You knew that this fourth, this third baby was going to come fourth baby fourth. <laughs> you knew that this fourth baby was going to come God. You knew when you knew how you do, how my life was going to be. And this is why it's important to be able to keep moving. My plans do not stop because in the past, my plans will stop because I felt like a baby is just going to stop everything that I'm doing. But then I had to understand that my plans doesn't stop. My purpose does not stop because I'm having more kids. God knew this and he knew that these kids would be a part of my life and a part of the purpose and the plan he has for me. And he knows what the outcome is going to be. And it's just up to me to say, okay, God, let's keep it moving. What are we doing? What's next? We got this next baby. Okay, God, I know what you're going to do for me. It's all about believing. It's all about believing and having faith in and remembering why you're doing it. So a lot of people say that their why is their children. And, you know, but my why is fulfilling the purpose of God. And that requires me to go with the flow. And I'm just thankful because I'm at a totally different place as far as my mindset my heart, I'm still working on some things, but y'all, I am delivered. This is like a testimony and God is working on me and through me and I'm allowing him to, him to come in and do that for me because I know I don't want my life to be the same anymore. Our life remains the same because we choose to live the same way. We choose to I don't know, like just anything in your life that's repetitive or bad or whatever, you choose that because God has given us that ability to say yes and no to things. And I chose to say yes to him and allow him to completely gut me all the way out to refill me with his peace and his love and his joy and his abundance and his favor and his provision. And that requires me to go with the flow of things because he already knew this. So it shouldn't even be a surprise to me. I should be like, okay, God, you already knew this. You know, I saw this coming, but I didn't see it coming. Not this soon, but you already knew. So I know this is a part of your plan and your purpose. And let's go with the flow, Lord. It's all about, he's a, like, he wants to know how we're going to respond to things. And then once he sees how we're going to respond and we get before him and pray, then he'd be like, okay, she's ready. So let's keep going or no, she's not ready. So I'm going to let her go through her issues and just delay the process even more. And I don't want to delay anything else in my life anymore. Like I've been living my life like that for so long. Y'all, so it's just important to be able to go with the flow of life because if God wanted us to make a plan for our life and then he say, okay, this is how I'm going to have your life go. Imagine how the world would be like. I can imagine everybody would be rich and living wealthy and doing Lord knows what, but we plan. He tells us the plan, but we also have to be prepared for him to change things immediately for us. We have to be able to embrace that and keep moving. So it's important to adapt and be able to go with the flow, y'all. I'm just, you know. Just sitting here reflecting and thinking about my life. That's all. So I just wanted to share with y'all and talk to y'all. Um, but if you're going through this time or you feel like, you know, your life is just so frustrating and it's repetitive and, you know, you can't seem to overcome some things, that may be the reason why. You're not allowing God to love on you 100%. You're not allowing him to show you what life really is supposed to be for you. He didn't say that we wouldn't go through hard times. He didn't say that he wouldn't discipline us. He disciplines us and it's hard, but it's up to us to learn so we can keep moving. That's all about that. Going with the flow and adapting is what that's all about. We have to be ready and stay ready. So until next time, remember to glow. Remember to affirm yourself. Remember to do what makes you happy because you cannot pour from an empty cup. I'm just here to encourage you, give you guys peace of mind and letting you know that it's important for you to embrace life and be able to go with the flow.